Right guys, it's Finn here. Welcome back to another Premier League prediction video where of course today we'll be talking about and analysing every game coming your way for Premier League Match Week 11. And guys, just like most other Premier League Match Weekends, there are a lot of hot topics to talk about this week. First of all, we've got a brand new managerial face for Tottenham Hotspurs. If they've just sack the likes of poor Nuno Santo. He's out of the door, he is gone. And obviously Spurs have brought in the likes of Premier League winning, serial title trophy winning manager Antonio Conte, someone who seems to win trophies wherever he goes. But the big question is, can he win it with Tottenham Hotspurs versus Everton in his first game in charge? Also looking at the rest of Premier League match week 11, we've got the big game, the Manchester derby, Manchester United versus Manchester City. It's always a tight contest and it always sparks the question Question, will Manchester be red or will it be blue? And that's where I want you guys to put it in the comment section down below. Do you think Manchester will be red or blue after this upcoming weekend? I'm kind of interested to see what the vast majority of you guys seem to think about this fixture. We've also got West Ham United versus Liverpool and a bunch of other really exciting games this match week that once again you'll not want to miss and we'll be covering all of those games, all of those fixtures in today's video. And of course, once again, guys, if you're new to my channel and you like this kind of content, if you like Premier League predictions, Champions League predictions, and a bunch of other football content, and you're brand new, make sure to subscribe down below to not miss my content in the future. It would be much appreciated. But jumping straight into Premier League Match Week 11, game number one we have to talk about is Southampton versus Aston Villa. Now, both of these teams, it's a tiny bit weird because looking at Southampton, I feel like my thoughts about them is the fact that they haven't done that well this season. It's just my immediate thought about them. But funnily enough, they've actually only lost three out of their 10 games so far. They've picked up the odd win here and there, but vast majority of their results have been draws, which does kind of show that they have the ability to steal points here or there. Where if you look at Aston Villa, they've lost the last four games in a row. They got a red card in their previous game. And at the end of the day, they're just not looking good. They lost 4-1 versus West Ham United. Now, because Aston Villa are in horrible form at the moment, and as I said, Southampton have the ability to steal points, I'm going to put forward a draw, a 1-1 draw between these two teams. As I said, Southampton have their moments, they do need to prove to me that they can win games again, and Aston Villa just in horrible ways as of late. You know, obviously there's been a lot of talks about that red card, whether it should be a red card or not. I do feel like it was somewhat harsh, but at the end of the day, Konsa was the last defender, and that is a red card uh, offence, that is the rule in football, obviously. As I said, it is going to be a 1-1 result. Aston Villa will be looking to pick up points because they are not in the position where they should be. They should, oh, have fallen heavily since last season and it might show to an extent that maybe they were a one-man team. Maybe Jack Grealish was a lot more valuable to them than we actually ended up realizing. But as I said, it is going to be a 1-1 draw and my player to watch is going to be the likes of Ollie Watkins. Once again, I feel like Aston Villa without Jack Grealish don't quite have their star player this season. But from time to time, Ollie Watkins has stolen a goal. He has helped them get a result and I feel like there'll be a case in a situation like this, in a game like this. I think he'll help Aston Villa to a draw. Now jumping into the next game, game number two if you may, it is going to be Brentford versus Norwich. Now unfortunately Brentford, the team I feel like everyone loves in the Premier League, they have lost their last three games in a row. I feel like they are such a spectacular team that really have the ability to surprise but they've just lost 3-1 to Burnley so a part of me is starting to lose that faith. My my ability in them or my faith in their ability should I say but saying that looking at Norwich they haven't won a single game so far this season and they have not won in their last 20 Premier League appearances only gaining a possible two points out of a possible 60. Now looking at statistics like that I don't know about you but I'm not heavily impressed to be honest with you and because of that that kind of restores my faith in Brentford. I feel like Brentford will get a win. They are in better form. I've seen a lot more from them this season and I am going to give them a 1-0 win and in terms of a player to watch once again I feel like Brentford as a whole I feel like they've done very well as a team and I wouldn't really point at any specific individuals but I feel like once again Ivan Tony, although he's not scoring and smashing in the goals like he did in the championship last season he is still creating really decent chances and I feel like time will eventually come where he'll start to score the goals and now moving on we've got the likes of Chelsea versus Burnley now as I said Burnley very decent game versus Brentford and they are actually showing this season that they've got the ability to score goals something that they don't always do every single season 
And one thing I have to say is the likes of Maxwell Cornet is such a super impressive change to Burnley. I feel like he could be the player to take Burnley to another level. And by that, I mean he's that kind of player like Adama Traore was for Wolves two or three seasons ago. He's the same kind of player that the likes of St. Maximum is for Newcastle United. He's that kind of player who could make a huge difference for the club. He is so impressive to watch. But once again, versus Chelsea, looking at Chelsea, it is just such an impressive team overall they've shown that they can defend their midfield can dominate and they can score goals there's a lot of talk about the fact that Romelu Lukaku hasn't been scoring a lot this season that obviously Timo Werner obviously flopped heavily last season but they are actually getting goals from all over the pitch I mean their top goal scorer so far this season is Reese James in the right back position but also my kind of question to you is do you need a talisman up front do you need a striker who can score 20 goals a season up front if your entire team has the ability to contribute and score here or there i mean let's not forget chelsea won the champions league last season and they didn't necessarily have a talisman although Giroud had a very good champions league season i don't know part of me believes that if you can get goals from everywhere in the pitch then at the end of the day you don't necessarily need a 20 goal a season striker up front i do feel like chelsea should win versus burnley they are the better team we've seen better results i'm going to give them a 2-0 win and my player to watch it's a man i've just mentioned it is going to be reese James because in terms of defensive ability, creative ability, goal scoring ability, he is just such a fantastic right back and he is absolutely the complete player. Now moving on to the next game, it is going to be Crystal Palace versus Wolves. Now Crystal Palace have just beaten Manchester City 2-0. They're not looking bad this season, they've only lost two games this season. Yes, I know they haven't picked up a lot of wins, they've been getting a lot of draws, but you know what, I've been very impressed with how they've played. Obviously the likes of good old Wilfred Zaha has become the first ever Crystal Palace player to score 50 top flight goals for the club. I mean, I would officially say that he is Crystal Palace's best player of all time. I don't know what your guys' verdict on that is, but what a superb player. Crystal Palace are looking so good this season. They've got so many brilliant individuals, but something about Wolves, in my opinion, is looking very good at the moment. They are getting some really impressive results. They are getting very good wins. They got a 2-1 win versus Wolves in their uh, versus Everton in their previous game. I think Wolves can be tremendously proud of them themselves as i said although crystal palace has impressed me so far this season i just feel like wolves have been getting a lot more wins as of late i'm a lot more confident in them winning a game like this so i am going to give wolves a 2-1 win and in terms of my player to watch for the fixture i'm going to go for raul jimenez once again maybe not scoring as many goals as he used to but he is definitely having an impact on the team the chances he's creating for a striker for a man who was known for scoring the goals he is creating some beautiful chances this season he still has the ability to score as we saw in his previous game and I do think that he will end up being my player to watch but as I said can't be too careful around Crystal Palace they've only lost two games this season and that was versus Chelsea and Liverpool so I mean you can't give them too much hate about that they're looking pretty good and they could very much well do it versus Wolves but that ladies and gentlemen takes us to the next game which I would argue probably the biggest game this match week, the Manchester Derby. Manchester City versus Manchester United, which it's kind of weird as a Manchester United fan because Manchester City have dominated the Premier League for years now, for about 10 years. Yes, they don't win it every year, but they will by far far always one of the favorites to win it but saying that Manchester City haven't beaten Manchester United in their last four meetings in the Premier League and now that Manchester United has Cristiano Ronaldo who seems to be saving Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's ass and job by a mile I mean he just seems to do it every single week in the 90th minute I mean that could add a very interesting dynamic to do Manchester United now have a better chance of beating Manchester City especially after losing to Crystal Palace in their previous game it's a very tricky dynamic but at the end of the day, the rivalry is always there, no matter what the form is between these two teams. When they play against each other, they give it their absolute all. Obviously, Manchester City this season don't have a proper main man up front. They don't have their striker like an Aguero, although they still have Jesus in the squad, who doesn't score as many goals, has the ability to score, though. I don't know. I think it's going to be a really entertaining game to watch, and I actually don't know what to make of it. But I do feel like it will be a tight contest, and I am going to put it down as a 2-2 draw. I don't I don't think it's going to be blue i don't think it's going to be red i think that this manchester derby is going to be purple in my opinion and in terms of a player to watch i have to put cristiano ronaldo the amount of goals he's been scoring for united the amount of times he saved
saved Manchester United. He has been terrific. I think I read statistically somewhere that all 11 or whatever of his goals he scored for United so far this season have either come from losing or drawing positions, which just shows how many times he saved United. And I think he'll do it once again versus Manchester City. Now moving on, we've got Brighton versus Newcastle. Now looking at Brighton, they've had a terrific season. Yes, they've been drawing a lot more games as of late. They're not winning as many as they were in the beginning of the season, but they've just drawn 2-2 with Liverpool. And as Jurgen Klopp said, Brighton is just a very good team. I mean, they didn't even play the likes of Neil Mopai in a game like that. I think Brighton can be so proud of the way they are playing. Looking at Newcastle, still yet without a win so far this season. They just are not getting the results that are necessary now they don't have Steve Bruce. They are still without a proper manager. The likes of um, the likes of Unai Emery at Villarreal has just turned down the job opportunity to go to Newcastle United. As I said, still without a proper manager, still yet to impress me so far this season. So I am having to, uh, I am going to have to give Brighton the result in this one because they have looked more impressive and they've definitely shown me more this season. I'm going to give them a 1-0 win. And in terms of a player to watch, although they didn't play in the previous game. I'm going to put the likes of Neil Mopay. He has scored four goals in seven games or something like that this season. Definitely a talisman. Definitely looking good so far this season. If not him, then it has to be someone like Trozard. As I said, Brighton, in my opinion, are just the clear favourites between these two teams. Now moving on, we've got Arsenal versus Watford, which Arsenal, just beating Leicester City 2-0, they have been in brilliant form. I would say in their last seven, eight games, probably better form than any other Premier League team in the Premier League. They are finally getting their results and it begs the question, was trusting the system, was going with the system with Mikel Arteta uh, the thing to do? Maybe we we're wrong about Mikel Arteta, maybe he really did have a plan, maybe this was all part of his plan and things are finally falling into place. Maybe as I said, maybe just trusting the process was the right thing to do because Arsenal at the moment are looking really good. Defensively, they're not looking bad, they are looking brilliant. Ramsdale is looking like one of the best goalkeepers in the Premier League and maybe one of the best bargains of all time. Only £30 million for what seems to be England's next main man between the posts with how brilliant he's been. He is going to be my player to watch just because of how defensively solid he's been between the posts. I mean, I don't often put a goalkeeper as my player to watch, but the way he's been goalkeeping, I have to put him there. I think Arsenal at the moment are looking in really good shape. They're scoring the necessary goals and they're really looking like a brand new Arsenal that I've not seen for a very long time. I'm going to give them a 1-0 win if not a bigger result because I do like Watford. I feel like they've got it in their bag. Obviously beating Everton a week or two ago, 5-2, they showed that they can score goals. Defensively, yes, very sloppy, but Ben Foster pulls off some incredible saves. Don't think Watford will get the result, but I do feel like Arsenal will get a 1-0 win. And as I said, Ramsdale to be my player to watch. Next up, we've got Everton versus Tottenham. Now, as I said, obviously Tottenham Hotspur's brand new manager. I really liked Nuno Santo. I'm a bit sad that he's without a job. I'm not sure whether it was necessary to sack him or not, but the fact that they got in Antonio Conte, I think makes it worth it. If they got any other manager, I would question it. I mean, I would absolutely love it if Wolves were almost in slightly worse form so that they could sack their manager and bring in Nuno Santo. I think that would be terrific. But you know what? Focusing on Spurs versus Everton. Everton have been in horrific form as of late. Some of the games that they've played, I mean, they're just not looking like in the position where they should be. I mean, looking at both Everton and Spurs, both of them have been heavily underwhelming and disappointing over the last few years. Saying that, Everton, I've seen from time to time, they have the ability to score the goals. Players like Townsend, players like Gray, I mean, they're all looking brilliant. I just do still think that Everton are suffering heavily without the likes of Calvert-Lewin or without his form there, without his presence. When he's in form and in the team, he is a difference maker. But without that, they do seem to be struggling. And Antonio Conte, as I said, he's won trophies absolutely everywhere he's gone, whether it be Inter, whether it be Chelsea, whether it be Juventus. He just knows how to win trophies. I feel like he will be the manager to change things around for Spurs. I am going to give Spurs a 3-1 win, a very comfortable result. As I said, I've just got a lot of faith in Antonio Conte's ability. And in terms of my player to watch, it's going to be a weird one, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm going to go for the likes of Harry Kane. He hasn't been scoring the goals this season, but I think he will be the player to watch. I'm not necessarily going 
go to say he's going to be the best player. But you know what? The big question is, will he start scoring goals? Will he now start to hit the net more often under Antonio Conte? Will this be the manager to finally turn Harry Kane into the Harry Kane we once known and loved or knew and loved? That's going to be the big question. That's why Harry Kane's going to be my player to watch because I want to see if he can score under Antonio Conte. As I said, Spurs going to give you a comfortable win. We'll see whether I'm right or wrong about that. And that ladies and gentlemen takes us to our second last game this match week Leeds United versus Leicester now I don't really have too many kind of shocking opinions about this I'm going to give Leicester a 2-0 win once again we've just seen more results from them Leeds United we still need to see them get one or two more wins although on the attacking front they've actually looked pretty solid from time to time once again, some of their marksmen definitely need to hit the net more often. Defensively, still very solid. But I've just seen a bit more from Leicester City so far this season. Going to give them a 2-0 win. And my player to watch has to be the likes of Daka. The way he has been scoring for fun or even creating chances. He has made a world of difference to this team. Especially two, three weeks ago where he get, got that assist for James Madison. I feel like he is the player to restore confidence in some of these players. I think he's an incredible player and will be one to watch in a fixture like this. But Leicester City need to look after themselves because they have lost a lot of really important points and a lot of really important games this season. And this might be the first time in the last three, four years where I don't think Leicester City have a shot at the Champions League this season. I know I've got one or two Champions League or sorry, I've got one or two Leicester City fans uh, that follow my channel. But just looking at Leicester City, this season they've dropped quite a bit in form and I just think there's too big a gap between them and other top four teams. They seriously have to pick up their socks but that guys takes us to our final game of premier league match week 11 which by the way if you have enjoyed don't forget to subscribe down below it helps the channel out and it means you get to see more of me in the future but it is going to be west ham united versus liverpool now yes i know liverpool drew to brighton in their previous game but they are just such an amazing team we saw that versus atletico madrid we've seen it over the last year or so they are a fantastic team and they've really rebuilt themselves and have looked amazing since last season nothing bad versus West Ham as I said they just got a 4-1 win versus Aston Villa they are looking brilliant in the Europa League they are the team to stop Liverpool if any team because of how they play Declan Rice has shown on quite a few occasions maybe he could potentially be a 100 million pound player I don't know depends who's paying for him if Manchester City want to buy him they'll probably play pay 140 million pounds but you know what West Ham United looking so good at the moment but unfortunately, Liverpool, in my opinion, are just looking unstoppable. I can't see West Ham United stopping Liverpool. I can see Liverpool get a 3-1 win. As I said, kind of hurts because I like West Ham. I feel like they can score goals. I feel like defensively can be solid. But there's just something special about this Liverpool team. Going to give them a 3-1 win. And my player to watch is going to be Trent Alexander-Arnold. Purely because of how he played in the Champions League. The assists he got, he has proven that maybe he's back in form. Maybe he has shown that maybe he is the right back that we want knew and remembered the right back that we've seen over the last three four years is finally back the right back that can create the chances and also i think it's kind of boring that i go for mo Salah every week so i wanted to change it up but that ladies and gentlemen will be it for my predictions for premier league match week 11 i hope you guys ended up enjoying this video i hope you end up enjoying premier league match week 11 as i said i'm a manchester united fan so to an extent i am kind of worried whether we can get the result versus manchester city i, I don't know it's one of those weird games games and can go absolutely any way but guys i hope you have enjoyed this video like subscribe all of the good things that end up helping the channel obviously i hope you guys catch me in future videos i hope you want to stick around and let me know in the comment section down below will manchester be blue will it be red will it be purple what will manchester be but guys this has been finn fy double n cheers